Hi, I'm Dr. Randy Martin with the Marcus Heart Valve Center here at Piedmont, Atlanta, and I'm thrilled to be joined by my colleague, Dr. Jim Counton. Jim is a, a very excellent cardiac surgeon. I can say that because I've witnessed you over the years here at Piedmont. You know, you're unique uh, in that you've actually transitioned to becoming an integral part of the transcatheter heart valve team that we have here. You're doing a lot of the TAVR procedures. Um, what's that been like for you as a, as a traditionally trained and excellent cardiac surgeon? I think initially that it was it was difficult because you know we're not working in in the chest we're not using incisions and uh, we we don't get to see the anatomy that we're used to but uh, I, I think the technology that's out there now and that's going to be out there in the future makes it exciting and you know I think we'll you know we'll talk about what the future of heart yeah. surgery is too but uh, I, I just say the transition was difficult. It, but but was it difficult because you're used to seeing the anatomy, or was it difficult because of catheter ba skills? In other words, handling catheters. Did you find that challenging? Not particularly, but you know, I I, th I think it was primarily because of not being able to put our hands on what we're working on and and seeing instant results. And uh, you know, when you're not in the chest and with any kind of uh, misadventures, you. Uh, um, you just have to access those differently. Right, right. But, but, but learning the catheter skills, and you know, obviously you guys as surgeons have tremendous hand-eye coordination and skills, but learning the catheter skills was not difficult for you? I didn't think so, no. Okay. And so you've been, you've been at this uh, for quite a few years now. Um, is it natural for you now um, in doing these? Um, you feel, in other words, very different now than it was two years ago when you started? It's, it's like anything we do. Uh, the more you do, the more comfortable you are. And, and I'd say it is, it is more natural. And, you know, watching the cardiologists get access, uh, which, which they do primarily, you know, all these things are commonplace now. Right, right. And, and uh, Jim, the, the model in going forward in the future is really, I think, to have the surgeon be an integral part, especially as we transition into doing transmitral uh, catheter repairs. What's the surgeon of the, how, does, how do we train the surgeon of the future? Well, what, what we've transitioned to is a multidisciplinary approach in medicine. We, we each have our individual roles, yet we have some overlap and we, we all complement each other quite well. I, I think TAVI would be very difficult to do with just one specialty. Right. I think you need the skills of, of uh, both a cardiac surgeon as well as a cardiologist and uh, that makes, makes it stronger approaching it from a team. Plus we need good echocardiographers. Right. What, and looking as we go toward the future, uh, uh, do you see, I mean I see surgeons playing, being integral as we go, especially not only with continuing with TAVR, but as we go into the as I said, the transcatheter mitral approach. You, you think that, I mean, I, in fact, I think surgeon understands that anatomy even, even better than the cardiologist does. Well, I, I think catheter-based technologies are, are gonna be the wave of the future. Uh, you know, we're, we're in trials right now where we're looking at intermediate risk patients. I think that's the big question that's gonna need to be answered. The technology's going to continue to improve. I think we base some of our surgical decisions today knowing that catheter-based technology is going to be a big, play a big role right. in the future. What about, what do you, what do you see if, if you were in charge of a training program now, how do we train cardiac surgeons of the future? I mean, I want them to have operative skills, but certainly a lot of the young surgeons want to have, be an integral part of this catheter-based approach to valve disease. How do we train these guys and gals? Well, I think certainly the, the most difficult part of uh, these catheter-based technologies is the thought process, the uh, uh, deciding who to use these technologies on. The actual procedures, are, it's, obviously it's important to know how to do those, but I, I, I think for a surgeon, what, what gives a surgeon a good basis to be uh, good with TAVIs is that he can operate. Right. That's... <laughs> <laughs> And so the, so the surgeon of the future must must have a strong basis then in operative skills. I, I think I think that's that's imperative because you know we, we have other disease processes that I, I feel are going to be treated surgically for years to come because we, we just don't have good alternatives yet like coronary artery disease and you know, a lot of uh, even still a lot of valve disease or aortic diseases you know we're not there yet so 
for us, we need to make sure that our, our young surgeons can operate because if they can't, then you and I are in trouble. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, you've, you, you've, you've done a fabulous job, um, not only as a cardiac surgeon, but now as an interventional cardiac surgeon. I'll give you that new title. So thanks very much. For, uh, you know, it's going to be a wild future, but it's going to be fun, very challenging. It's fun. I'm, I'm very happy to be a part of it. Great, super. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again.